In this video, I'm going to be talking about the writers behind your favorite hit songs. My name is Alex Majewski, also known as Jay Sky. We all have favorite songs, bands, and artists. It's natural to drive in your car, sing along to your favorite lyrics, and not think much about it. But behind every hit production, guitar part, and charismatic vocalist is a great song. The song is the heart and the soul of it all. Great songs typically could stand alone like a singer-songwriter intimately performing as an acoustic or piano vocal. From there, production techniques are used to make it more accessible and fit into a genre more efficiently. As a songwriter and producer who went to my dream school, Berkeley College of Music, I studied songwriting and I want to give credit to those lyric and melody writers who probably wrote some of your favorite songs. Some of them are big artists themselves, while others love a much more low-key lifestyle. This video is about the writers behind your favorite hit songs. Let me know in the comments if some of these are your favorite hit songs and some notable mentions of ones that I didn't mention in this video. I always love shooting the shit with you guys. So let's just get this out of the way. Although this isn't a tier list or ordered in any particular way, let's start out with Max Martin. He's clearly the top of the top when it comes to crafting hits. Whether we admit it or not, we all have been influenced by his work in one way or another. Acts like the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, you name it, he did it. The good ones at least. Behind every hit song is a Max Martin. And that's just the fucking truth. More recently, he had songs like Into You by Ariana Grande and the new single, Yes N. Also co-written with Alyssa Salmanzade, whose name I'm probably butchering, so super sorry. He also wrote Unholy by Sam Smith featuring Kim Petra, songs by Lizzo, Ellie Goulding. Next, we have breakthrough artist Tate McRae with her song Greedy. Some of the songwriters include Amy Allen and Ryan Tedder from One Republic. If you remember their song in the early 2000s, Apologize. He also wrote Halo for Beyonce. Both of these writers have many songs and artists in their catalogs, including Halsey, Harry Styles, Selena Gomez, and the list just goes on. Amy has excellent music for her solo records and a hypnotic voice herself. Back when I was in songwriting school, I had her in a couple of classes and she's just a super talented person and really sweet overall. And it's no surprise at all that she's had the success that she's had. Definitely check out her song, Heaven, it's dope. The next artist slash songwriter I'm gonna be talking about is a party animal. Someone with a low metabolism who's not afraid to leave his shirt at home. When I think of Bright Green, I think of this guy, and that's Little Aaron. Emo rapper, hit songwriter, he wrote songs for Lizzo, such as Boys, People You Know by Selena Gomez, and Swaco's song Loser. Super dope, and he's also collaborated with some of my favorite emo rappers, such as Lil Lotus, and a whole bunch of other ones I talked about in other videos. If you're a fan of MGK's Ticket to My Downfall, then you're going to be a fan of this next songwriter that you probably didn't know. His name is Nick Long. He's just as responsible for the creation of Tickets to My Downfall as Blink-182's Enema of the State. Producer, composer, songwriter, he wrote Bloody Valentine, Emo Girl, produced and wrote with groups like Weezer, Five Seconds of Summer, Papa Roach, The Chainsmokers. While we're on the subject of heavy guitars, let's talk about the one and only Dr. Luke. For a while, he was like the protege and right-hand man to Max Martin. I actually talk a lot about him and his history in my video, When Emo Rap Took the World by Storm, so definitely check that out if you want to learn a bit more about him. One of my favorite CDs by Katy Perry, One of the Boys, Kelly Clarkson, Since You've Been Gone. He's the rock influence that exploded in the mid-2000s pop music scene. Often when you think about rock bands, especially new metal, you're not thinking that they're bringing in outside songwriters to get charting songs. So this next writer that I do have to mention is Lauren Christie. She was one of the writers on Korn's Twisted Transistor, g -Z song Me, Myself, and I featuring Baby Rexa, Avril Lavigne's song Skater Boy and Complicated, Liz Fair's song Why Can't I in the soundtrack of 13 Going on 30. Um, I was a big nerd growing up and I wasn't very good with girls for a while, and when I would hear that song, I would always think of 13 Going On 30. Many of the writers in this video have actually collaborated together, and on some of the same songs I'm even mentioning in this video. There's songwriting scenes all over the place, but primarily it's being done in Los Angeles for pop music, and also Nashville, but that's more for country. And these writer rooms and the circles that they're existing in are really small, so it's very common that people at the top for pop songs are collaborating and working with one another. So if you look at hip hop credits, you're gonna notice like 10 or 15 credits sometimes because you have three or four songwriters, two people that are featured on the record, and then you have a couple producers, someone that's specializing in the drums, someone that's doing some synths and maybe playing guitar and a few mixers, and all of these people are getting credits. When you look at pop, there's still a bunch of credits. It's usually like 
three, maybe four songwriters and one or two producers. And oftentimes one of those producers is also one of the songwriters. When I was at Berkeley, I studied with teachers such as Pat Patterson, Scarlet Keys, and even hit songwriter, American Idol judge, Cara Diaguardi, who wrote Just Like a Pill for Pink and Ashley Simpson's pieces. I remember when we were in class, you told us the story of how she ended up at the session with Ashley Simpson. Um, she was actually supposed to be somewhere else and there was a bunch of traffic and her day was just kind of going to shit. And she got a call to come to the studio, like a, an emergency session. It was like three hours in traffic in Los Angeles on the opposite side of town. And she just went on a whim, um, not thinking it was gonna really turn to much, but she was just like, fuck it, I'll do it. And it turned out to be one of her biggest first hits, which was Pieces by Ashley Simpson. So it's fucking dope. And I learned a lot when I was in her class, also from Enrique Mullins, who was like the producer portion of the class. He taught me so many tips and tricks that I still use to this day. Fuck, it's like I have a fucking New York accent right now. He taught me so many tips and tricks that I still use to this day. Throughout my musical journey, I've written for countless bands and artists, such as Miranda Glory, Sam DeRosso, Kill Madonna, Don't Tell Julie. I also tour as the lead guitarist in the band Arrow. In a couple weeks, I'm actually dropping a new project with my homie Jordan Potash. Uh, he always tells me I fuck up his last name, so I apologize if I didn't say it right, even though you just texted me with the hyphen to say it correctly. It's an all pop band. We produced and wrote the whole thing together. It was such a fucking blast. We have a bunch of songs coming up. So if you could do me a favor and go over to my J Sky Spotify page, follow me on Instagram at J Sky Production. It's gonna be in collaboration with the name of our new group, but that's where you're gonna get updated to see when it comes out. Also subscribe to the YouTube because we're gonna be dropping a dope music video to go with the single as well. Next up is John Feldman, whose claim to fame is being the singer in the ska band Goldfinger. Although this isn't my favorite project that he's done, their music did heavily contribute to the Tony Hawk soundtrack in a major way. John has been one of the biggest writers and producers in the pop punk scene, new and old. Songs like Flames by Mod Sun, all of the used music, Lil Lotus's record Error Boy, Blink-182 records. In this video, I'm mainly covering pop and alternative producer songwriters. So to cover some R&B and hip hop, which I'm also a fan of, let's talk about Carter Lang. Carter Lang's written and produced for artists like SZA with her song Supermodel and Kill Bill, Post Malone's Sunflower, Small Worlds by Mac Miller, Rest in Peace Baby. Then we have Andrew Goldstein who produced one of the new Blink-182 songs, One More Time. Let It Go by Demi Lovato off the Frozen soundtrack. Talk about getting money to buy your house in Silver Lake. I actually saw him at the bar after playing a show in Silver Lake like a year ago. So that's kind of an inside joke for me, but he was friendly when I met him, so that was cool. He also wrote for Neo, Katy Perry, Britney Spears, Hurtful Mistakes by Maroon 5 and Megan The Stallion, Pill Breaker by MGK and Trippy Red, Black Bear, Hot Bummer Girl, Black Bear also has a laundry list of his own songs. Uh, he took a different approach to being someone that wrote songs behind the scenes for a long time and then became an artist. He's hopped on so many features. He's pretty much competing with Lil Uzi Vert. And I don't really know, but if we could do some kind of poll saying who's done more features, Lil Uzi Vert or Black Bear, let me know in the comments. Next up, we have Benny Blanco, who's extremely versatile. This is someone I've been listening to early on. Um, I found out about him because he did collaborate with producers and songwriters like Dr. Luke and Max Martin. When these producers needed to kind of have a club edge on the songs, they were hitting up Benny Blanco to do so, like Britney Spears' song Circus or TikTok by Kesha. Um, Benny Blanco just had that sensibility to really make things just like feel like this. Max Martin really had his like 90s breakbeat thing when he was working with NSYNC and Dr. Luke brought in that rock undertone with the heavy guitars that you would hear in early Katy Perry and Kelly Clarkson. When you combine the three and you had Benny Blanco mixed in there, you were able to get the best of both worlds. So you'd have that four on the floor, you'd have some like sparkly, twinkly guitars, and you have that fucking club sensibility. And they made some of the biggest hit songs. You could definitely check it out online and just see the, the credits are just gonna keep going and keep going, keep going. It's so impressive. These are people that I was looking up to, studying and trying to emulate for a really long time. Another person who's produced and written with all of these people includes Shellback. He's written the song for Pink, Raise Your Glass, the famous Taylor Swift's fucking song 22 and a bunch of her other ones. So those are some of the biggest songwriters that have been out over the past 20 years or so. So influential to me. And I hope you really enjoyed watching this video. And next time you hear these songs and just any new songs that you really 
really dig. You just are thinking about the people that put their heart and souls and their craftsmanship into the music. When I was at Berkeley, they would teach us a lot of techniques, whether that would be rhyme schemes, having exact rhymes or near rhymes, or just kind of um, lining things up symmetrically or coming on strong beats or weak beats. And these are tools that you could use when you're in a pinch and kind of check your work against. But at the end of the day, songwriting to me has been something that I was good at doing since I was like nine, 10 years old. Um, and it is a natural progression. Having these tools definitely gives you a competitive edge and it's really good to practice. At the end of the day, you don't have to go to school to be a hit songwriter and make amazing music. So don't be discouraged if that's not the path that you took. And I would love to talk to anybody if they have any questions or anything like that. My name's Alex Majewski, also known as J Sky. I appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. All the support, you guys have been subscribing, commenting, and it literally like makes my fucking week. So it's been great. Um, I can't wait to share the, the new project that I'm doing. So please subscribe to the channel, hit me up on Instagram, and follow me on Spotify just so you get that notification. And it really does help like the algorithm and push it. I know it's stupid, but at the end of the day, that's the only way that I could get in front of more people. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.